Well, I feel like the four amigos are back in action. Of course, it's all about Italy today. We're going to be talking and sharing experiences from our Italy tour. And I'm making the delicious chicken dish that I made while in Italy for everybody on the tour. This and much more coming up on Cooking with Chef Brian right now. Well, I definitely think some introductions are in order here, don't you think? This is Brian. So nice to meet you. Yes. Some people know me by Chef Brian. Uh, <laughs> it depends on the locale. In the grocery store, it's Chef Brian, and I love when people come up and say that, because I'm like, yeah, you're watching the show. Thank you. <laughs> so introduce your wife, Carrie. This is my lovely wife, Suzanne Jackson. Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Some of you might know me as Sue, but I'm Suzanne. I'm okay, Suzanne, I she's, will not forget yeah. that. She's all grown up now, so she's, <laughs> she gets to be Suzanne. And of course, let me introduce you. Please. This is the very famous Carrie Jackson. You may hear him on the radio every morning I'm here not, in I'm the not, area. I'm not nearly as famous as this guy. Oh, I don't know about Wait, that. Seriously, you're we, both pretty famous. <laughs> Let's we, get serious. We go, to dinner, we go to dinner and it's always, oh, Brian, Brian. I just kind of sit there. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts talking and people are like, oh, wait, I know that voice. <laughs> and of course, Alicia Richmond, you all know Alicia here. She is our fashionista extraordinaire here on Channel 2. And she absolutely does a fabulous this job and this tour came about our Italy tour from us talking years ago yeah what we've been years. talking about this for like five years that we wanted to combine our <laughs> we have known each other a long time that we wanted to combine our loves of cooking food. and food and fashion yeah. and go to Italy and, and so we finally made it happen last year, and Carrie and, and Suzanne we went with us. Along. It was so much fun. And it do you was. remember the Florence Villa that I cooked the meal? The oh, little yes. cooking so class in? I'm going to show you all how to do that. So let's get started and just start with a few little basics here. All right. So this is one of the things that I talked about when I was over there is Brussels sprouts. You know, Brussels sprouts you can find all over the world, literally. And so many people have a love-hate relationship for these little little cabbages, as I call them. But if they're prepared correctly, they are absolutely it's, delicious. It's true. I started out hating them, and then Sue f figured out a way to make me like them, and that is bacon. Bacon, bacon makes bacon. everything better, it's true, it's very yeah. true. And so it's one of those things where if they're prepared correctly, they are delicious. And I always ask people, what is your favorite and least favorite foods? And when I listen to it, it I can always say, okay, now, if it's not a texture issue, I can prepare a food in a myriad of different ways, I guarantee I'm gonna find you a way that you're gonna like the taste of that food. When, so, you, when you ask that yeah. question, is least favorite food usually a vegetable? Usually it is, Yeah. usually it is. Oh, Mine so. would be jello. I really hate jello. I don't know why. I just, it's. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way. I, we'll make I, a salad. I, Maybe I should have you all submit your favorite jello salad for me to try and like jello. There you go. How's See, that? They can convert you to a jello flavor. Absolutely. So, Carrie, right over there, yes. I have a bag. I'm going to get you guys fixing this meal this time, okay? You ready for this? Yes, sure. Right. Carrie, right there's that bag. Yes. If you'll grab that bag, and what I would like for you to do is to put each one of these chicken breasts in the bag yes. and just flatten them to about a quarter of an inch thick. Flatten them. All right, all right. Is, I can do that. This is really important because. Because when you do chicken breasts, there are two different thicknesses. You have a thick end and then you have a thin end, and by flattening them, they're all the same width, and so it cooks evenly. All right. So that's really important when you're cooking chicken. Okay, now we're going to start also with some. You just go right ahead. You I, go right I don't, don't want to screw you up here. So no. Okay, so over here, it could get loud. Uh, it could get loud, huh? All right. There you go. There you go. So, food processors, I always talk about food processors having such a great place in the kitchen because you can do everything in them from doughs to chopping vegetables to slicing to pureeing. They just really are an all purpose instrument in the kitchen. And of course, you know, over at Macy's, I have a story. You know, my friends at Macy's, and I'm not saying this. That's my favorite this, one because this, we work together at yes. Macy's a lot. But I have a story. So years and years ago, I bought the 14 cup Cuisinart online, yeah. and it was close to $1,000 when I bought it. I mean, it was one of those Heavy. things that I saved up for and was so excited about it. And then I found the same exact mixer, uh, food processor at Macy's, and it was like $400. Yeah. They've come down a lot in price. Uh, no, this was like recent, I mean, not too far after I had bought oh, really? it online. Oh, wow. And so I was a little bitter by that. So. Buying online isn't always the cheapest route. <laughs> I actually prefer to buy in the store. I do too. So I can hold it in my hand. And I like the personal, you know. and, and I can take it home. Yes. I can yes, take exactly. it home with me. So go check them out there at Macy's department store. So Sue, I'm going to have you just slice up these Brussels sprouts. 
And this is one of those things that by slicing them up, I'm gonna be able to add a lot of flavor to them easily to do. So okay. that's very important. So all you have to do is put them in there, put the lid down on there and push on. And it's gonna slice that up. Push it right down. Oh. Woohoo! Look at that go. Whoa. And then Fast. turn. That is. Yes. So that is one thing that is so wonderful um, to do. And I actually did um, this exact same type of a dish for my brother and his family when they came over, or my sister and her family. But I actually blanched those sliced um, Brussels sprouts and then tossed them in a vinaigrette and let them marinate. It was really, really delicious. Well, and I was going to say, something that you taught me that I never knew, and I love all vegetables, mm -hmm. but probably Brussels sprouts is the hardest for me. Mm -hmm. But when you uh, roast it and mix it with a little olive oil, it's amazing how much better it and a little is. sea salt that the vegetable can be. It is truly amazing. And it's easy. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how easy it is to roast it. It is go. fairly easy. That is for sure. Now, I'm going to grab some I... salt and pepper out of here. Okay. That's That should be That's plenty enough. right okay. there. Good. I'm going to grab some salt and pepper out of here and we're gonna get these chicken breasts cooking. I'm going to toss them with a little bit of uh, flour and some salt and pepper and the saute them, and we're gonna create a delicious lemon caper chicken dish. Ooh. So it's gonna be fantastic. But I have got a great trip for you, uh, treat for you guys. I prepared a video that we're all in of oh. our trip to Italy. Yes. And I want you to take a look at it. And if you see something fun, let's talk about it while we're okay, watching sure. it. Okay, sure. Let's take a look. Do you remember this one? Well, that was that's I me. That that's one. Carrie. Oh, yeah. Carrie. Yeah, the pasta over there is just the amazing. pasta, the pizza. I mean, the fresh foods and the art. I mean, just on the sidewalk. Yeah. So. Oh, this is This is in Tuscany, which. There Alicia I am. in the wine store. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we are in Florence. Oh, there's Ed's head. <laughs> This is my favorite city. Isn't that city. beautiful, the Duomo oh, there? It's beautiful. Yes. Oh, this is the villa that that's we did the cooking class in. That's so. Amazing. And this is the that's kitchen. the kitchen. See the fire there? I mean, you can't build. It looks build. like a movie set. You can't it's build a movie set to look that century, up. Too. I now, mean, coming up right original. behind it, you're going to see the plates on the counter, which I grabbed and about had a heart attack because of <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Because There's they Lori were the, the actual original. original plates yeah. of the villa. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. It's just such an amazing and beautiful country. It is. Oh, hi. Well, of there course, you are. there you are. Of course, now you can come with us to Italy. Just go to ColumbusVacations.com, October 13th through the 22nd. And the rate is $22.89, that's for the land tour. Now this is gonna be a trip that you cannot get anywhere else. One, because Brian and I are going with you. We do a lot of fun shopping in the markets um, for clothing and for food, but you can go right onto the homepage of Columbus vacations.com and, and we'll talk more tour. about this when we yeah. come back so we'll be right back to finish up the chicken and all this delicious Italian meal. Special thanks to my friends at Klondike Brands Potatoes for helping to make this segment possible. Hi everyone, Chef Brian here cooking fresh with Klondike brand potatoes and this time of the year with the weather changing nothing is better than a hot bowl of clam chowder to just take that chill out of the air and of course my secret to a great chowder are Klondike brand potatoes. Visit klondikebrands.com for great recipe ideas, cooking tips and money saving coupons and while you're there check out the secret to this deliciously unique clam chowder recipe. Klondike brand potatoes cook fresh in your kitchen. Well, welcome back, and it's just a fun, fun show with Carrie Jackson, his wife Suzanne, who went to Italy with us. Of course, the famous Alicia Richmond is with me today as well. And we're cooking up a delicious um, chicken dish that I actually showed you how to do in Florence at a cooking class we did on the tour. Now, you can't get that anywhere else. <laughs> no, Only this is exclusive this to tour. our tour. I love it. So, Carrie, tell us what you're working on over there. Well, I've, I've, I've pounded out those chicken breasts, and now I'm putting, is this just flour? It's just flour. Flour, and, uh, you know, do a little shake and bake kind of thing and with a little salt and pepper on top is all. Perfect. So yeah. you're just going to cook those for about five to six minutes on each side until right. they're fully cooked through and our chicken piccata is well on its delicious way. You got it. So Suzanne, yes. I know you are a master in the kitchen. No, I'm not. You can tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have you add just a little bit of oil to that pan and while you're doing that and that's warming up, Alicia is chopping up some garlic here for us because we're going to actually saute the Brussels sprouts, sprouts, sprouts <laughs> in a pan of hot oil. Now it's at this point that if you wanted to, you could actually add uh, bacon 
into the pan if you wanted to have a bacon flavor into too. it. Yes, right. because it is delicious as well. So how much garlic you got there? I think we're ready to go with the garlic. Yeah. Good. Here you go. Do you want to just toss that in there? Sure. I, I just hesitate moving my hand in there because I see you keep moving <laughs> that knife You're afraid around. Of me with the knife. A little bit. A I've little bit. I've nice seen you skills. haul a, uh, a purse bag around Italy. I'm a little worried. <laughs> Shopping is my specialty, not cooking. Shopping That's why is. I'm learning. No, um, you um, in Florence. There's yeah. a lot of Florentine leather. Yes. And this was so cool to me. I mean, you can literally go down the streets and find this Florentine leather. And why is it so famous in Florence? Well, Florentine leather, it has been around for literally centuries. That mm -hmm. was one of the skills that the artisans learned. And they, they're famous for their patina, mm -hmm. which is the shine on the leather. And you can notice in Florence a Florentine leather, and it has an official stamp on it. Oh, OK. And it's so fun because there's these outdoor markets. You see these amazing handbags, and you think, OK, can those be good quality? They cannot have the stamp if they're not actual Florentine leather. Okay, so it's kind and of so it's almost kind like, of like a marketplace versus sparkling wine. I'm guessing if it's yeah, exactly. Can only be produced in no knockoffs no in knock -offs. Florence of the Florentine bag. Well, Florence was another fun. Do you guys remember what happened when we first arrived in Florence? A certain somebody we met. Help me remember. Um, Her family husband. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This Your was relatives. seriously the coolest it was story amazing. because you are Italian. Your family background is. Yeah, so my family, my dad is Italian mm -hmm. and his side of the family. And we've been doing some genealogy. Long story short, I found a cousin that lived in Florence. We started corresponding over email. And she said, I want to meet you when you get into Florence. So when we got off the bus. She was right there waiting for us. It was the coolest. And this is my best moment. She worked for the Gucci family for 25 years. She was their personal assistant. Of course, my family would work for Gucci. Of course, of course. And of, of course, she so was head is, to toe Gucci, too. So it is genetic, is what I'm saying. It finding. is. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. I knew my fashion lineage had to come from somewhere, and it had to come from the top. There you Italy, go. Italy, Gucci family. Of course. Go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper. There we go. to this okay. here and of course I'm using some great seasoned salt for my friends at Real Salt. Just add that in there. <laughs> oh, the pepper went up my nose. <laughs> a little bit of salt in there and just begin to saute those up. So we have a lot of flavors that are going on with these dishes because when you saute or caramelize something like this in high heat, what it does is it literally burns the sugars the natural sugars in the food. And that changes the whole flavor spectrum of the food. And this is why when I ask people, what is your least favorite food? And if it's not a texture, I can generally prepare it in a way that I guarantee you I'll find a combination of flavors that you like. And so yes. this is a great way mm -hmm. to do, I gotta sneeze because that pepper. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> no, you're so, right, this, this is the way I would do spinach, for yeah. example. Where yeah. you couldn't get a kid to eat spinach usually, I, I would definitely eat it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Well, you know, the kitchen is one of those areas that we're always looking to spruce up a little bit. Right. Well, my friends at Magleby Remodel have another great tip for, our, for us. Let's take a look. A great way to improve the fill and look of your kitchen is by replacing the hardware on your cabinets. Picking the knobs is the easy part. Drilling the holes for the hardware, well, that's a little bit more tricky. Our friends at Magleby Remodel are assisting today to ensure a high quality installation. To start, place some tape over the cabinet. Carefully mark the placement of the knobs. Use a tapered drill bit to avoid any type of tear outs. Be sure when drilling the holes that you have secured the cabinet face and steadied the drill. A hole in the wrong place can be fixed, but not very easily. Another tip from Magleby is to use a screwdriver when assembling the knob. Using a drill can often lead to stripping screws or damaging the threads of the hardware. Installing other types of hardware follows the same process. Make sure to always measure twice. What a difference new cabinet hardware can make in a kitchen. This professional tip was generously provided by my friends at Magleby Remodel. From one room makeovers to whole home additions, they can do it all. Magleby Remodel, you dream, we build. 
Well, we're talking all about Italy today with Alicia Richmond, of course, Carrie Jackson, and Hi. Suzanne Jackson, <laughs> who went to Italy with us. We're fixing up some delicious sautéed Brussels sprouts here, as well as a chicken piccata, which is coming along nicely it's in close. the pan there. It's, it's close. Very close. Very close. So what we're going to do, as soon as this gets finished, we're going to take it out, add a little bit of white wine, let it be glazed out the pan, some butter in there, and then I'm going to use some capers. Now, capers are a real interesting little flavor. They have an intense flavor because they're a brined little berry. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of is a texture, flavor. It just goes really well with the fresh lemon juice that we're going to be using. Now, I had never had these until you introduced them to me. Oh, serious? And you know I'm a little picky about food. Um, let me rephrase this. Alicia Richmond is the most picky eater I know. Are you, <laughs> are you Italian or Italian? That's what I'm wondering. You're so picky. I'm worried that you're Italian. Italian. I am not. Okay. I cannot be friends with Brian Woolley, Chef Brian Woolley, and not learn how to love food. But it's in. true. Really, I love capers. I cannot believe how much better and more flavorful they make certain dishes. And oh, it was I, amazing. Oh, that to you, my oh. friend. Oh. Heart, it's heart you, Alicia. Caper. Heart you, Alicia. Yeah. Let's give those one right. more turn. And you know, I have to say, my favorite part about our Italy trip when we went, honestly, was the food. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's nothing like Americanized Italian food. No. The food, even in just these little places that oh. you go to, you would get this incredible dish handed to you, and, and you, you just didn't expect it. The food was so amazing. That mm. was one of my favorite parts of the trip, which is eating everything. Oh, everything. And San Gimignano, which was this oh, little hill time. Do you remember? It was my truly really our favorite. Yeah. 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 Great little city. It made me appreciate white wines more. Oh. They, they locally, they make a, a delicious. You drink it now. I oh. drink white wine now. <laughs> it is so light and crisp and delicious. Uh, the, the, the white wines of San Gimignano. I just fell in love with them. Now, if you're wondering, that's in the Tuscan region. Yes, yes it's in Tuscany. So. It, uh, you can't even drive a car up into it. No. Remember? Oh, you yeah. just had to hike up, and it's literally on top of the hill. Well, and I bought my olive oil Go ahead oil and take there. those out. All right. Normally, there's um, uh, viniculare. Is that how you say it? Oh, funiculare. Funiculare that goes up the Which hill. Which is like a little but, tram. But there wasn't the day we were there because the bus drivers and Sorry. everybody decided to go on strike. They were on strike. strike at the so time. we did hike up to the town. But, but <laughs> it, wasn't a, it wasn't a horrible hike. Uh, no. no. It's so beautiful. A little right bit of white wine. Beautiful. Let that boil down just a little bit. And then what I would like you to do Butter. is just to go ahead and swirl. Now that is a technique that we're going to incorporate. We're creating an emulsification there. Just kind of swirl that like into. That? Yep, just like that. All right. Okay, just like that. Fancy, he is all being <laughs> fancy there. But you know, one of the wonderful things about San Gimignano that I enjoyed is it's not the normal stop off. It's not like a normal tourist. Exactly. Town. And no, it, people to me, don't know about it. No. It's kind of the hidden jewel. I guess jewel. you do now. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. You won't know are. how to be there and experience unless you come with us. That's right, true. Well, I, we just sat down on the little um, cafe street, we on did. the cafe there at, on the street, and just enjoyed like the most amazing cold cuts and yeah. And I know I, I know I said it earlier when we were talking about the video that you, it was like being on a movie set. It was. I mean, there were there were cobblestone streets. There was a cat sitting in the middle of the street, and he refused to move for anyone. Refused. He just yeah. sat there. Old Italian typical cat. Man, <laughs> walking up and down. They look like extra 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 Pacino, chatting. Yeah. A little bit yeah. of fresh oregano. There we go. Okay, now I have a question for you, mm -hmm. Carrie and Suzanne. When you said you were going to come on the tour, I know you were both very, a little nervous about group travel, which yeah. a lot of people are because you don't know what to expect. You think it's just a big clump of people going from site to site. Tell me what your experience was Capers. with group travel. Capers. We, we were hesitant, oh, to all. be quite honest with you. Okay. Well, we should <laughs> like the capers. Because mm -hmm. you don't know who else is going, and you don't know if you're going to get along with them, but it was so much fun, and we did things that I don't, we would not done normally ourselves, you know, if it was just the two of us. We, we you know, we, we think we're very hip, and so we, we when you <laughs> no. said well, group travel. Well, you are, of course. <laughs> when you said group travel, we were like, oh, but Brian's a friend of mine, and he's like, come on, you'll have a good Come time. with yeah. us. It was really a good time, and you made friends. That was the other cool part. Well, and my friends. favorite part, too, is, you know, a lot of people have those reservations, mm -hmm. and I always love to dispel the myth of group travel. I mm -hmm. think part of the fun is who you go with yeah. and who's leading the tour, because we try to make it really fun, and we don't want you to feel like you're missing out on some of the great sites or that you have to do a lot of planning. It's so exactly. we really do that for you. I'm really gonna finish up. We're going to finish up this food, <laughs> all of our banter about Italy when we come back. It's a delicious chicken piccata with sauteed Brussels sprouts. 
Special thanks to my friends at Macy's Department Store for helping to make this segment possible. Hot and fresh from your oven, Rhodes. Special thanks to Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors, for sponsoring the show's closed captioning. Thanks to all of the sponsors of the Cooking with Chef Brian show, Real Salt, Real Foods Market, the Utah Beef Council, Klondike Brands Potatoes, Rhodes Bake and Serve Dough, and Macy's Department Store. A special thank you to all of them. Well, let's finish up this chicken piccata. And Carrie, I must say, I am most impressed with your culinary prowess here. Me hold pan over fire. <laughs> you squeeze lemon yes. into sauce. <laughs> so to finish it off, a little bit of fresh lemon juice into there, and it is done. And we have our beautiful chicken breasts that I've just placed here, nice and browned. I'm going to just spoon some of the capers, or not the capers, the Brussels, Brussels sprouts, sprouts right over top of it here. And I have to say, this is truly a dish. And what a fun Italian trip that we went on to. And I mean, you won't get this experience anywhere else from food to fashion to All the art, just the history. Art. It was amazing. It was, and a beautiful country. I think it's my favorite place right uh, now. And you got to see where Indiana Jones popped up out of yes. the temple <laughs> in Venice. In Venice. <laughs> <laughs> and went, ah. Oh. Oh. Venice. <laughs> you know, the, the manhole he comes out of. We, we found the manhole. We did. Thank you for being we patient did. with me with that, Brian. We had to go and get lost in the canal area, little streetways of Venice, but we found it, and it was amazing. Of course, this recipe, you can go right on the cookingwithchefbrian.com website, and be sure, if you're interested in the Italian trip, let's get signed up and let's come with us. It's October 13th through the 24th. Did I get that correct? <laughs> It starts on the 13th <laughs> and ends when you come back. Exactly. Yeah, the Columbusvacations.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Chef Brian, and I'll also put out a little post of where you can go to get that also. So we're pretty much ready here. I pretty much okay. covered all that chicken. So here. Let's eat. Let's have a taste of the Brussels sprouts, all right? And thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you all in Italy with us. Mm. I can't, I really, I've got to taste this. This is so delicious. Oh, you go first. Yummy.